Uh, my talk um, today was about movement of moths uh, along riparian reserves. So these are strips of forest that uh, are retained along watercourses, streams and rivers uh, through oil palm plantations. Um, so we were interested in understanding whether these, uh, these sort of linear fragments of forest might act as dispersal routes for, for organisms that otherwise are dependent on, on rainforests. So they, they might allow uh, those organisms to colonise uh, other patches of habitat and to move between those habitat patches. Well, what we were doing was uh, actually marking the moths. Uh, we were putting dots um, or writing numbers on their wings uh, with marker pens, and this allows us to um, get a sense for uh, the directionality of their movements and the distances over which they're moving. We think that they're relatively robust to, to being handled a little bit. So the moths are varying in size from about um, three to four centimetre wingspan to six to seven centimetres. Yeah, so repairing reserves are potentially a, a, a valuable way that we could reduce the impact that um, uh, oil palm plantations have on biodiversity. So in Sabah and also in other parts of Southeast Asia, large areas of forest have been converted to oil palm plantations. Uh, in some of these landscapes, forest has been retained along rivers and there are now regulations in force in many places that uh, stipulate how wide those riparian reserves should be. Um, so what we're really interested in knowing here is whether these riparian reserves are effective, both as places for biodiversity to live and to have self-sustaining populations, but also as, as dispersal routes. So our moths were fairly, fairly mobile. They um, moved um, across the whole um, area that we were trapping within, so across about a, a 500 metre transact along these repairing and reserves. And they seem to behave in a way that uh, suggests they're responding to the boundaries between habitats. So they're much more likely to continue to move through the repairing forest, through the strips of forest retained along the rivers, rather than moving out into the oil palm plantations that are uh, adjacent to them. So this suggests that they, they perhaps have some way of sensing the change in the environment, perhaps turning back when they reach habitat boundaries. And that gives us some hope that they, they might well be able to use these, these strips of forest as routes for, for dispersal. Yes, yeah, so I think moths in this case are, are being used as a model organism. We've also done similar work on dung beetles, uh, again marking them and, and, and recapturing them at different distances along these repair and reserves, and they seem to be showing similar patterns to the moths. So more generally, I guess, we might be interested in how larger organisms also use these repair in forests for movement, but uh, starting with the, the dung beetles and the moths is, a, is hopefully a good start. Yeah, it's difficult to know. I, I guess that could happen if you had artificially inflated densities of some of these species. At the moment, we, we don't really know um, how those densities compare between the riparian forests and um, nearby areas of, of kind of continuous forest. I think some of the interesting possibilities for future work will be looking at the communities and how, how they change through space, whether you get different moth species inhabiting uh, sites at different distances into these repairing corridors.